Pumas and Springboks, folks, Rugby Championship 2022, and it's 36 20 points to win for the box. Good lead for the box, bonus point position, come back from the Pumas, and then South Africa pulls it back away. Crazy kind of game. Uh, at times it was really stop start, and then they would kind of burst into action. But anyway, we'll go through some key events and stats. You guys can let us know your thoughts on the game. Um, good crowd, good weather, and um, the game actually started off as a bit of an arm wrestle. Now, if you look at the halftime stats, it's pretty much completely South Africa, but the Argentinians did actually start okay. They managed to get a turnover from the kickoff, from a mall. They did get pinged at the uh, first scrum for the break foot thing, which is one of those new laws, which is... Um, you know, causing a few issues at scrum time. Um, they won the first scrum though, Argentina, well, Argentina when they actually had um, their referee call a decision on it that wasn't the break foot one. So 3-0 um, early when Mostert got pinged at the breakdown. So Argentina had a lead and then South Africa immediately got it straight back. They went through like 10 phases of their own from the restart. So 3-3 early, it's a bit of an arm wrestle. There's some aerial ball. Um, the Argentinians, I think, are maybe not quite sharp enough on some of the loose balls. But, um, yeah, both sides miss long shots at goal. It's pretty even. But then, uh, South Africa are just like, they have a, a switch in mentality. Like, nah, we're not going for threes anymore. Maybe because Willems' boot isn't the most reliable. So they decide if it's not like a relatively straightforward kick, then they're, they're going to go for touch. Which is maybe sensible because the mall, the mall gets some pretty good pay. On 20 minutes is one of those occasions they opt for touch. They get the mall, they get advantage, they're on the right wing, Moody tears onto it, he doesn't have that much ball in this game, but he goes bloody close, and then uh, the Argentinians' defense is at sixes and sevens, so Hendrickson makes the right call, picks it up, snipes right, and he should be in for a try for all money, but Carrera stops him from an offside position. So Carrera had just been involved with the Moody tackle, doesn't have a chance to get back around outside, but there's no defenders there. So he's able to hold Hendricks up, but from an offside position, that's foul play. So it was a foul play. Well, it's, it's a penalty. So um, yeah, he gets he gets pinged for um, for that, and it's yellow card for him. It's penalty try. It's 10-3 lead for the Springboks. And yeah, man, I think them going for a touch is, is going to get some good pay for them in this game. I mean, admittedly, they do give away a kind of soft penalty later on when Eben... Uh, thinks the ball's come out of a ruck and he shoots four, but it hasn't, so he's offside. So during the yellow card, that's kind of not what you want. And um, Argentina are able to, um, you know, from that advantage, they throw the dice, they, they, their hands aren't there, and uh, they eventually just stop for the penalty. So they, they get three points, it's 6-10, during the yellow card, which is actually seeming like, you know, a pretty good result for the Argentinian guys. But I mean, then they get turned over basically straight away from the kickoff so the restart issues remain for argentina if you've been following them at all this season against scotland and in the rugby championship restarts which is like one of the other kind of set plays right it's one area they absolutely have had big time issues that kind of continues um the argentinians well sorry the spring box off for touch it's a five meter line out it's advantage it's a line out again the mall gets stopped they finally give it to the backs and uh, Hendrix uh, sells the dummy of all dummies, and uh, he does go over for a try after being denied the first time. Uh, so 17 points to 6, and then, I mean, South Africa are just brutal at the breakdown. Their defensive pressure is just suffocating the Argentinian attack when the rare occasions they've got the ball. Like, Marks wins a breakdown turnover. Um, the Argentinian uh, penalty count's getting really high. 30 mi 31 minutes again, South Africa up for touch. They maul it. And this time, Max goes over on 32 minutes. They do miss the conversion, but it's 22-6, and that's uh, 12 points to three during the yellow card. So really, really clinical, I think, from the South Africans. Barring that three points conceded for a pretty soft one, it's um, it's just what you want to see from a side when they do have the man advantage. I mean, South Africa do concede another penalty later on at um, scrum time. Mal Herber gets pinged for having his feet too far back. He's overextending. The Pumas decided to opt for touch. They are five meters out. It's like a massive chance to turn around the momentum. But who gets a line-out steal? Like if you haven't watched the game, you're probably thinking Tiaka, maybe it's a bit, maybe Moster. Stephen Kitzoff from the ground is able to just slap the ball back because they decided to go for a kind of low uh, the low one at the front. And Kitzoff has just got the awareness. I think it was Marks that caught it from the slap back. Like, 
if Steven Kitsoff is stealing your line out, something is, is very wrong with um, with your play. So nothing's going for the Argentinians in that first half. It's all South Africa. And they have one last chance before halftime. It's another time they opt for um, uh, the Fords to, to get involved. Basically, the, um, the, the box boys. This time, with the uh, Pumas on a yellow card warning, South Africans go for a scrum. They go through a bunch of phases. Bertrand knows offside, so he gets yellow carded, so it's another chance to convert. It's a six-meter line-out. Um, Diaka manages to go over, but they ruled, I think it was Mostert in the air, kind of tapped it forward first and then tapped it back. So the fact that he didn't regather it means the initial knock-on is a knock, despite the fact that the ball ended up going backwards. So I thought the ref's comms there were at least pretty clear. So, uh, yeah, that try is denied. A bit of an escape from jail for... Uh, get out of jail for the um, for the Pumas boys because if they conceded there, you know, you'd be um, in more trouble than 22-6, basically. But, I mean, the halftime stats are phenomenally well upsided. Possession is 70-30. Uh, territory is like 53-47, which is not that bad because the Argentinians have been able to put a bit of boot to ball. But, I mean, the telling one, run meters... 175 for the box, 23 for the Pumas. I mean, Jasper Visa alone has had 41 meters in that first half. And like 10 of those Argentinian meters are Malia at fullback, basically getting those free meters from a kick. So there's been very little doing ball in hand for the Pumas guys in that first half. The penalty count is 12-5, so the Pumas have just been absolutely under the pump. I mean, they may be lucky that the scoreline is, is only what it is. Uh, second half maybe helps the Pumas a wee bit because the game gets a bit loose, right? There's um, there's a couple of intercepts both ways. It ends up with um, Argentina conceding a penalty. The box going for touch, but then the Pumas getting a line-out steal to at least kind of stop that momentum. I mean, there's one moment where Argentina, from again, loose play, they kick the ball through. Creel and Khaleesi have to kind of scramble back. So it's really good for Argentina because they're in a yellow card. And what the box have been successful at is that very structured play. And they're, they're ke able to keep it kind of unstructured. But that being said, the defensive line from the, the box is still phenomenal. There's one moment where Matera, who's a pretty good ball carrier, has got it. And Marx just drives him backwards. And they're forced to kick. Now, the Argentinians were, were pretty good at contesting in the air. But they're just getting nothing going forward, ball in hand, for, for a long time. The yellow card ends. They're not punished for it. And then I think the Pumas do actually start to get some momentum, like Montoya wins a uh, penalty at the breakdown, which at least gets them down South Africa. So I mean, Quacker Smith comes on and wins a penalty pretty much straight back. But I mean, Argentina are actually getting some possession, which is what they absolutely did not have in the first half at all. I mean, South Africa are actually the ones starting to get some, some trouble with the ref. Uh, like three advantages in a row, the crowd's starting to get into it. Um, they get a yellow card warning. Uh, there's one moment where the ref gets hit by the ball, so the game kind of slows down a wee bit. It's it's a wee bit ugly at that time. It's very kind of stop-starty, but um, the box defense for a long period was being tested and not broken for as if for ages. I mean, advantage Argentina. LaRue gets offside, so he gets yellow card, and Argentina go for the scrum again. They can't break the box defense. They lose it forward, 52 or 62. Argentina win another scrum penalty. They go for touch again. There's a kind of soft penalty conceded on Quaker Smith for like taking, I think it was Lavanini, off the ball. It looked more like Lavanini just kind of ran into him as a dummy runner. But anyway, that call came from the TMO. They scrum again to the Pumas. They get another advantage. Willemza um, going for a tackle kind of knocks himself out on one of the hips of the um, Argentinian guys. So France Dane has to come on. It's kind of unfortunate for, for Damien. Hopefully he's all right for next week because... Um, they're already without Pollard and, and Yankees, uh, Yankees is out of the squad for the off the field stuff. But I mean, scrum again for the Argentinians, it's advantage. Kubeli gets held up after a snipe and I write the note, they just can't score. They just can't score. But the TMO gets on the line and says you need to check the actions of Quaker Smith for a uh, bit of a, a bit of neck action on Kubeli. Uh, it was kind of like a judo roll. I mean, he got him around the neck and then um, pulled him into the end goal so he'd be held up. Uh, it was in, if you watch it in full speed, it's very quick. Um, but they ruled that not only is it a penalty, but it's a yellow card worthy penalty and a penalty try worthy penalty. So um, 
Yeah, that's like I said that they, they just couldn't score. Well, they could from a penalty try. And that that seems to at least maybe get the Argentinian guys' tails up a wee bit. If I was a South African fan, I'd probably think that's a bit of a harsh call. Because is there a guarantee that Kubeli's going to be able to reach out? If not for that player, I mean, maybe. But he's already on his knees, so he's got to have to have a long arm. I'm not sure what the distance was, but he was... He was not like right on the line. He was brought down just short of the line and one roll away from um, going into the angle. So maybe he would have made it, but they, they ruled that he would have. So finally, the Pumas break the D in that way. So it's 13-22. Faf gets pinged from the restart for playing Carreras in the air. I mean, it's a fair contest, but he puts his arm around him once Carreras wins the ball. So it's a penalty. And remember, they're 15 on 13 at this point. Springbrook's still got LaRue in the bin as well. So I write the note, like, what can Argentina do here? Well, Crema puts an inside ball through to Moroni, and he scampers over for a second try in, like, five minutes. Now, there was a question mark about both the pass and the grounding, for sure. Now, it's one of those ones where, depending on what camera angle you looked at, it looks very different, and it's, it's kind of a hard one to judge. One of the camera angles, the first one they show, and I had the South African commentary team, looked okay. It looked kind of flat. And um, even the, the South African commentator first up said that looks all right. And then they showed the reverse angle and it looks forward for days. So the referees say, nah, it's fine. I don't know how many angles they had. They only showed two on my broadcast. But uh, as I said, one looked fine, one looked forward. And then uh, for the grounding, the grounding, I think, looked fine. The TMO, for some reason, wanted to look at that from like four angles. And he even like stopped play from going ahead which is what i don't like about tmos slowing down the game like especially that one like that kind of try where it looks like he's dropped it but when you slow it down you can see there's no separation in the fingertips like you've seen those scored hundreds of times and it's fine but he wanted to look at it like four times but it's given pass forward or not and it's 22 20 suddenly it's game on man that crowd which has been pretty quiet in the first half they were loud and you'd think maybe this momentum with the crowd is going to push Argentina over. If anything, it's South Africa who get the boost. Maybe it's a bit of a wake-up call. And this fires the, the Springboks boys up. I don't know. But South Africa, basically, they win a turnover. They get more advantage. They wrestle the momentum straight back. Phases advantage. And then Damon Dillon and his powers over. So all that energy from the crowd and whatnot is absolutely just sapped out of the game gone and that's game over 29 points to 20 and now they've got to chase the bonus point because they were in a bonus point position going into the second half and then that was kind of taken away from them so there's still a bit of time left uh to chase that bonus point five minutes left and um man they do it so that for just back themselves they uh showed some really silky skills soft hands i mean it's like Marks to Faree, who's come on as a loose forward rather than the replacement hooker because Marks plays 80. Mapimpi back to Marks, and he cruises over for the bonus point try pretty much right before full time. So France team with a casual, as you like, conversion from the sideline. And suddenly it's kind of back to happy days from a Springboks point of view. And from a rugby championship point of view going into that final week, it means that the, the box and the All Blacks are on the same points, just different points differences. So much needed for the... Um, for the box to, to be in contention because uh, the All Blacks have got a game at Eden Park, which in recent history, and more than recent history, the All Blacks tend to win. So um, the bonus point could be crucial going into this last week. So yeah, man, a bit of a wake up call for the box, but they got it done. They absolutely backed themselves. Run meters finished 284 to 253. Remember the, the Pumas had 20 odd in the first half. So that's a massive turnaround. Possession finishes 48-52, so it kind of evens out. The box dominate the territory, though, 58 to 42, but still not, like, hugely, but um, they certainly got the better numbers. Clean breaks is 3 to 5 to the box. Defenders beating the 16 apiece. Penalty count is high, 18 to 15, with the box conceding a few fewer, but, I mean, that's, that's a high penalty count. So it felt quite, quite stop-start for a while in this game. Um, but I was still, up until that penalty try... I didn't think that the box were going to concede any tries because their defense, despite the fact they'd been under the pump, was just um, huge. And um, like two yellow cards apiece is also, you'd say, pretty high. So uh, impact from the ref um, felt on this game. Although I will give him credit, at least he seems to explain stuff pretty well, which is one thing I was critical about Raynal for 
is like I know it's a second language, so it's harder to be as clear. But um, Dolman is at least clear and thinking whether he's right or wrong. At least he seems to explain it pretty clearly. Uh, individuals, man, Dale Linder, 59 meters, a clean break, and four defenders beaten. Bit of a big unit. Creel, not so much ball in hand, but he does make seven from seven tackles. Moster makes 17 out of 18. Proper workhorse, that guy. Uh, Gonzalez, 43 meters, a clean break of three defenders beaten from a Puma's point of view. He is still very dangerous. Kramer continues to tackle the house down. 11 from 13 from him. Fourie comes off the bench, wins two turnovers. I think Elric Lowe came on and won a turnover. So um, the bench certainly seemed to add a bit of impact from a Puma's point of view. Cabelli, when he came on for Butrino, um, started the second half. Uh, I think added a bit of something else as well. A bit of experience, but um, yeah... Krevi is now the most capped Pumas player of all time, so congratulations to him. That's a massive achievement, despite the fact that it was in a losing shift. So, um, yeah, man, Rugby Championship, it's all to play for. All Blacks are on 14 points. South Africans are on 14 points. It's just the points difference that goes in the favor of the ABs. If you want any rugby gear, be it ABs gear or South African gear, check out Level Rugby in the description. <clears throat> I just bought a jersey from them uh, the other day, so... Um, a URC jersey, which I don't have. So, um, birthday present for myself for next month. So, yeah, we'll see how that goes. But if you want jerseys, man, check out. Link in the description. they got loads of jerseys at level. And um, how does Owen and Kamani see some of those? Uh, he's the one guy who just doesn't care about, like, working his, like, doing his homework on pronunciation. Eh? How does he see Kubeli's name? Which is, like... B-E-L-L-I at the end of the name, right? And say Billy. How do you get Billy out of that? And De La Fuente, which is F-U-E, right? How does he say Fonte? How do you do that? That's a special skill to like somehow read that name and transform it into something else. I don't know. Spanish names tend to be kind of phonetic, I think. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Names are tricky. But anyway, Springboks win. Interesting game. Bit of back and forth, bit of controversy. You guys let us know your thoughts and uh, yeah, I'll talk to you guys again soon. See you later.